Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I color, crinkle, and store my seam binding. And this was a request from many people, so um, I just wrote a few down. So Christy Winkleman, Dot Zam, Jackie Ramos. Yep, I hope I said those right. This is for you guys and whoever else requested it. Um, first of all, I just want to start by saying that you can buy these. I'll put a link below. You can buy seam binding. It's from, well, the only one I've ever used is from Hug Snug. And um, it's about $10 a roll. And I'll put a link below. I get it at Ribbons by Zipper Stop or something like that. It's on Etsy. Um, that's the best price I can find for it anyway so far. But I just wanted to start by saying that uh, you don't need all these colors. Uh, it just really depends on what you're doing. Um, if you just could get one, I would get white. Or if you got two, I would get white and cream. Because you can change the color uh, to anything you want to match your project or whatever. So, um, this is the way I store my rolls. It's just a basket. Um, I think I got it like at a Myers or a Walmart or something like that. And I just stick them in there and I have the uh, ribbon coming out. One of these, you know, side slats just to keep it from, you know, wobbling all around when I pull it out. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm just going, I'm going to show you how I crinkle. Um, just the straight up colored ribbon off the roll and then we're going to go from there. Okay, so first I'm going to show you how to just do it a straight up colored a seam binding, how to crinkle it. This is really, if you're going to be doing a whole lot, um, like when I was doing custom work, I would, I would do a whole bunch at one time. That way, you know, it matched the project I was working on and I didn't run out. So, um, you want to get you a good amount. And if you're like doing a project like you're doing binding or something with the seam binding, do twice the amount that you think you're going to need. Um, that should be enough for now. So all you want to do is um, you can do two things. You can wet it with your spray bottle or you can just pour water right on top of it either way. And you just want to um, just keep squeezing it until it looks crinkly. Now, if you can you can take your heat gun to it right now and dry it. However, you're not going to get as much crinkle as you would if you stick it in a bag. Put it all the way in the corner and then just twist. Now, this isn't very much, but um, you just twist it, twist it, twist it. And then you put a rubber band around it to keep it tight. And then you let it sit. It usually at least is overnight or maybe even a couple days. So I've already done one. Uh, what did I do? This one was, has been sitting for a couple days. It's the same color. And so when you pull it out, it's super, super crinkly. Now, if I would have just tried this with my heat gun, it would not be this crinkly at all. Um, and when I make big amounts like this, I, I usually store it two different ways. It depends on how much there is and what it's actually used for. Like this, when I used to do a lot of you know custom work and I would be shipping stuff out, I would wrap um, the um, the product in a bag and then I would tie it with ribbon. So I had a bunch of two different colors ribbon. I had this ribbon and I had cream ribbon. So I stored it two different ways. I have this jar that's, I guess, meant for like cut flowers. So you stick your cut flowers in there um, so they'll stand up. But I would usually, whoops, I should probably find an end first. So I would usually just stuff it in there like that. And then stick it out through there. Well, maybe, there we go. And that way it would be sitting right next to my um, shipping station, that's what I call it, and I could just pull it out as I need it. Um, another way I would do it, if you don't have one of these fancy lids, is this is just a regular ball jar with the lid, and I just poked a hole in the lid 
I'm not even sure what I used. I don't know. I can't remember. It looks like I used something. I wonder if I used my crocodile. Looks like I poked three holes in there and then pulled it out and it's the same thing. It just feeds out without getting tangled, which is really, really nice. So if you're going to make a whole lot, this is a good way to go. Okay, if you're just going to make a little bit, the way I like to store it is I keep all of my packaging from uh, when I buy charms or when I buy flowers or, you know, pre-made things or whatever, even stencils and grunge board. Let's see, I've got all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, most of it's flowers, key, metal keys, you know, just whatever, embellishments. So I keep them on a ring and I have them close by here. And um, I like to use these smaller ones for seam binding. So all I do, let me get this put up. Is I take it? No, maybe not that pair of scissors. Where's my other pair of scissors? Um, I just take it and I cut a slit right there, a slit right there, flip it over the other side, cut a slit right there, and right there. So I've cut four slits, and then what I do is I bend them backwards like that. So now I have that shape, and then I also cut a slit up top. So what I then do, is sometimes I put a piece of tape right there, but you don't have to. So then I just gently, not tight, wrap it around like this. And then when I come to the end, so that slit I put on the top there, that just holds the end so it doesn't unravel. So this is like the perfect way, if you're going to do a bunch of small, smaller pieces, this is like the perfect way to store them. Oh, hang on, my phone's ringing. All right, sorry about that. I thought I turned my phone on mute, but I guess I didn't. Um, so this is the perfect way to store just little bits of seam binding. And then what I do is, I showed you this in another video, where I put all of these on a, a big binder ring, and then I have a clip, and then I clip it to... Um, you can't see it, obviously, but over to my left here is, um, I used to do a lot of stained glass, so I've got these slots for stained glass over here. So um, I just clip these to those divider slot thingies, so it's just really close to me. So all I do is open her up, and stick it on there, and then there it's ready to go for when I need it. And that way I can hold my project up and say, oh, which one's gonna look the best? Um, I also kept these, you know, when uh, Prima has some lacy stuff that they, uh, that they sell now and, well, they've sold it for a while now. Um, so I keep these when I run out of that stuff too, so that way that can be used. It's not, I don't think it works, I mean, it's, it works just fine because I'm using it right there, but um, there's nothing to tuck your, you know, you can't put a slit to hold your end, but I just tuck it underneath the wrapped part, so. All right, let me get this put up. I'll be right back. All right, the next way I'm going to show you how to color, I'm going to show you how to color um, the seam binding next. And the first thing I'm going to use is Distress Ink. Um, any water-soluble ink will work. Um, you know, the ink, it's just everybody has an ink pad somewhere, right? So all I'm going to do is, like I said, if you can only get one or two, um, you know, colors of seam binding, get white or cream. I mean, that's, that's probably the best, um, you can get your most for your money out of that. All right, so I've cut two small pieces, and there's, there's two ways you can do it. One, you can just put your ink pad straight to, this is a, um, a heat proof, what is this? What is this mat? It's called something. Help me out, y'all, what is this called? Um, oh, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> I'm, as soon as I turn the camera off, I'll figure it out. So I put that onto the mat there, and I'm just going to squirt it with water. I am going to put a glove on so that I don't get my fingers turned all kinds of colors. And then I'm just going to mop it up there. And then if there's anything left over, I'm just going to... So then you just want to pinch it and squeeze it and pinch it. And then you take your heat gun to it. And then, there you go, and it's got this really cool, like, let me move this, distressed, vintage -y, aged-looking 
feel to it. And it crinkled pretty good, considering you didn't let it sit overnight. And then, so here's the white. So, and then you can, that's one way to do it. And then you can take, let's see, what color do I want to do? Let's do peacock feathers. You can take your ink pad directly to the seam binding, just like that. And then give it a spritz. And usually when you go direct to the seam binding with whatever you're using, it is going to be more intense color. Wipe this up. And then pinch it, pinch, 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 because you want it to be crinkly and then dry. What's great about using the ink pads is like if you're stamping with this color, the you know, peacock feathers, and you want it a little bit of um, an embellishment, you know, that matches it perfectly. Look how cool that looks. Okay, so everybody has ink pads, so that's usually that's that's like a no-brainer right there. Um, let me move this. Um, the next thing that works really, really well is um, Distress Stain. Oh, this one's not even open. Let me see here. I've got a whole <laughs> drawer here full. That's not even, I don't want to open it yet. Let's see. Let me find one that's open that might be pretty. How about Bundled Sage? I hope it's open. Yep. All right, so I'm going to get another piece of white. Actually, I probably should get two. So you can do it two ways. Again, you can just put a little bit on your sheet there, add a little bit of water, and then just run your seam binding through there. And pinch it, pinch it, pinch it, and then dry it, of course. Okay, so now that's dry, and it's a very light color, but it's that bundled sage, and then you can always, always, <laughs> you can obviously go direct to the seam binding. I mean, you can tell a difference right away. You don't even have to add water when you're using Distress Stain, because it's obviously a liquid. So then you just want to pinch it. Just keep pinching it, and then dry that one. Okay, so here's the difference between those two. So direct to the seam binding is gonna give you a lot more intense color, which that way you can get something really soft, and then you can get something more intense. So that's just using Distress Stain. And then there's Distress, uh, uh, distress Ink Reinkers. These are obviously pretty intense colors, so you really just need a little bitty bit, depending on how much you're making, and you need to add some water to that. Let me cut off some seam binding here. If you didn't add water, of course the color would be really, really intense. This is Shabby Shutters. And you just do the thing, you squinch. and then dry. Okay, so there is the dried, well, it's almost dry, it's, it's not 100%, but it's close. And that's just using the re-inker, Distress Ink re-inker. And if you went straight to it with no water, it's gonna be more intense, that is for sure. So that's Shabby Shutters. I wanted to point out too that you can use other re-inkers, like there's a Stampin' Up, um, oh. <laughs> Uh, you can also use archival ink. Whatever re-inkers you have, you can use with this method. I just wanted to point that out because I'm just using Distress right now, but you can use any of them. I also have these Prima chalk inkers, and I've never tried to crinkle, I mean to color a ribbon with it, but I thought, why not? Let's try it. Some of these things I will be experimenting <laughs> on camera with you guys because I haven't used everything that I'm going to show you. Um, let's see, this one's cold ice and it's a chalk anchor. Let's just go straight to the ribbon first. 
and see what it looks like. And if you didn't want to crinkle it, you don't have to do this step. I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't work, right? And then you want to dry that. Let me do the other one first before I get my dryer out. And then you can go straight to the to the mat here, which I just cleaned up the mess I just made with that, but you know what I'm saying. Well, I can already tell this one's going to be a lot lighter than the other one just by looking at them. And then you want to dry them up. Okay, well, um, I wanted to point out that when I just put the ink onto the... Um, onto the mat, it didn't really pick up that much color. I mean, I don't even really see, maybe just a barely a little bit of a tint, but going straight to the seam binding worked, worked just fine. So that's Prima Chalk Edgers. All right, well, since we're on um, distressed stuff, I have um, alcohol inks, Tim Holtz alcohol inks. And I thought, well, let's try it with that. So let's pick a color. Let's do this uh, wild plum. Let me grab some seam binding. I think this one's going to be intense either way. So I'm just going to add some to my sheet here. I don't know. Should I add water or not? I could add alcohol, obviously. What would water do? Probably nothing. Oh, well, that's pretty. <laughs> wow. Wowzer. That is some intense color. Good grief. And then you want to squinch. Oh my gosh. Look at how bright that is. I'm glad I got gloves on. I can see the pink on my black glove. All right, and then you want to dry that up. Look at that. Wow. That is some bright pink. So that was alcohol ink, uh, wild plum color. Wow. That's really pretty. Okay, then there's the Avia spray inks. Now, I have my um, uh, India ink sprays which, you know, I'm going to show you with any ink, but I'm, I've got all these sprays too. Like I've got Lindy's Stamp Gang, Lindy's Stamp Gang. I've got Tattered Angels. I've got Dilusions. Ooh, that's a pretty color. Um, so I was going to, I was going to show you with a couple of these. This one's kind of cool. These are um, Moon Shadow Mist. I wonder what they would look like. Let me move my big basket out of the way here. Uh-oh, I am running out of space. You all should see all this stuff that I've got sitting around. Okay, let's try one of these just because I haven't used one of these in a while. This is Moon Shadow Mist um, and Violicious Violet. All right, so I'm going to cut me a piece off. And obviously, since this is a spray, you probably won't, you can add water, but you probably won't have to. Well, so far it just looks, looks pretty cool. We'll see. Look at all that spray. Obviously, I used way too much. Let me wipe some of it up. Normally, when I'm working, um, I would have some paper or some um, mixed media paper or watercolor paper or something to soak all that up so I wouldn't be wasting it, but maybe I'll use my paper towels for something instead. All right, so then you want to crinkle. Just crinkle it up and then dry it. I've been using my scissors to hold these little pieces down because um, it's a little ridiculous. They want to go everywhere. Okay, so you can't really see, this is what I used. You can't really see the variation in color like I was hoping, but it's very grungy looking. It looks kind of cool. I mean, you can see it on the paper towel, sort of. I mean, you might not be able to, but I can. Um, but it didn't show up on the seam binding, so keep that in mind. You're not going to get, like in this case, you're not going to get the purple. You're just pretty much going to get the different colors of brown. 
So let's try a different one. Let's try this one is called Starburst. Um, Mad Hatter Mint. Maybe I won't use as much spray this time. I don't. I guess the Starburst is spoke up, supposed to be sparkly. I'm not real sure. Whoops! I'm getting my white, my other white. <laughs> With the spray, you got to be more careful. You get it everywhere. Same thing. Just want to mop it up. And then you just want to squeeze it. So there that is. I kind of wanted to point out too, when you're just doing a small amount, it doesn't take that long to dry. Um, I don't really see any sparkly because the seam binding is really shiny anyway. So, so that one was, what's it called? Mad Hatter Mint, Lindy Stamp Gang. So that one looks pretty cool. All right, let's try a Dilusions and a Tattered Angel. Ooh, let's try purple. What's this one called? Um, it's not called it. Oh, After Midnight. I hope it's not too dark. Okay, let me grab a piece of seam banding. I haven't used this one um, as on seam banding before. I'm sure it'll be just fine. Woo, buddy. That's intense. I'm going to add some water to that. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Look at that color. Good. Oh, I don't even want to touch it with my bare hands. My, my thing's going to be so stained. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is intense. All right, I'm going to dry it up. Put my scissors over top of it. Check this out. Wow. Look at that. That is cool. I love the variations in the color there. That is so cool. That is a bright color. So that was After Midnight Dilutions. Wow. Um, let's do a Glimmer Mist. This one is Patina. I'm going to shake it out. It's supposed to have glitter. I mean, not glitter, but like shimmer in it. But I don't think you're going to see it anyway. Sorry, I don't mean to shake that in front of the camera. So let me get another piece of seam binding. So see what I mean by white is like your best bet if you're if you're gonna color your own. Why not just get white? And since this is kind of a light color, I'm gonna add a little bit more in color. Oh, it's mixing with the blue. <laughs> Whoops! I probably should have cleaned my. Uh, Matt here real quick. Let me do that. I'll be right back. Okay, I got it as good as it's going to get right now. So then I, again, I'm using the Glimmer Mist uh, Patina. And I'm just going to spread it right on there and I'm just going to squish it. And remember that the blue, there was a little bit of blue on there. So let's see what this looks like. I'm going to dry it. All right, let's see. Ooh, that looks really cool. It's got a really cool tie-dyed look to it. I don't know how much of the blue got in there, but you can see a little bit of color variation. So that was the Tattered Ang Angels Glimmer Mist. Um, okay, really so cool. next I want to show you with uh, my India ink. Let's see what color it is. Let's do purple. I haven't done purple yet. And I haven't done anything in orange either. Sorry, I don't mean shaking in front of the camera there. So this is just the regular Bombay India ink that I make my sprays out of, which you can totally just use the spray to. Um, if you've made some spray, you can just use the spray. So I'm just going to put a little bit onto my sheet there, my mat. I'm going to give it some water. Okay, cut me a piece of seam binding. And I'm just going to stick that in there and soak it up. And then you want to dry it. Look at my heat gun. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to clean that up. Okay, so look how dark it turned out just using it straight from the bottle. Which it looks really, 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 really cool. Uh, so I went and got the spray that I made. And I'm going to use that on there. And I'm going to see how different, where's my scissors? How different the color looks. 
just because now I'm curious. Well, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be lighter. Maybe not. Okay. I'll do the same thing. I'm going to row that in a ball. And then I'm going to dry it. Okay, so now this one's dry. This was from the spray. Move that. That one's the spray. And then this was just the India ink straight on the... They're pretty similar. One's a little bit lighter, but they're both pretty cool. So, this, you know, you could use your spray India ink if you made some, or you can use it straight out of the, out of the um, bottle there. That looks pretty cool. All right, next up, I have this drawer full of um, acrylic artist inks and uh, liquid watercolor and some cheapy tube watercolor. So I thought I'd give all them a try. I know, obviously, I know that the the uh, acrylic ink is going to work. Sorry, I don't mean to keep shaking it on camera. All right, so let's try the um, acrylic artist ink first. Let's do the screen. You know what? Let's let's be let's be let's go crazy. Let's do coup to, uh, coup. <laughs> let's do two colors. Let's do green and blue and see what happens. I think I got these in a set. Um, I like Hobby Lobby or something. Add some water to that. Probably didn't need to, but my seam binding, and then I'm assuming it's gonna mix pretty good on there. Let's wipe this up and give it a pinch. And then I'm going to dry it up. Okay, yep, it mixed. It mixed all together. Um, like that. So there's a little bit of spot let's of try blue. Let's try one more time, except this time let's use two different colors that aren't going to blend so much together. So I'm going to use this pink. I'm assuming it's like a, it's a magenta. I'll use pink and blue, and then I think what I'll do is I'll do one, and then I'll dry it, and then I'll add the other. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to start with the blue. I'm just going to add some drops. And just Maybe just a hair of water. And I'm going to dry that a little bit, just a little bit. And then let's add some pink. And a little bit of water. That's a lot more than a little, huh? Maybe do a little bit of squishing. So maybe this time we'll get three colors. Alright, so if you play around with it a little bit, you can get a little bit of variation. I couldn't get as much crinkle because I didn't want to squish it all together, but that looks kind of cool. There wasn't as much purple as I thought would show up, but anyway, so that's using um, acrylic artist inks. And then the last one I got in this bucket or this drawer here is, oh no, I've got, let me do the liquid water. Obviously the liquid watercolor is going to work. Let me wipe this up a little bit. Maybe All right, so let's see. Let's pick a pretty... Let's do... What is this? This is Brilliant Cad Red. I haven't worked with these yet, actually. So I'm going to put a little bit on my sheet here. There was something on the end of my thing. Now, like I said, I haven't used these at all. Pigment Red... I should play with these a little bit more. I've missed my mixed media, and I know I keep saying that, but it is true. I've been so busy. No time for me. All right. That looks pretty. Let me wipe this up. Think about what a piece of paper would look like right now if I used it to wipe up all of my 
all of my inks. And then I'm gonna squinch it, and then I'm going to dry it up. All right, this one's kind of cool. It made more um, variation than I thought it was going to. That looks pretty cool. And that was, um, again, Brilliant Cad Red with, uh, this is liquid watercolor. And then let's try one of the ones in the tube here. Should I use the same color just to see if it's gonna look any different? Let's see if I got it. No, that's not it. Crimson. Invert Sienna. Did I just look at that one? I did. Well, that might be the closest I got there. These are uh, Artist Loft. I'm assuming they're like student grade, I don't know, or beginner or something. So I was going to try using this. It's, you know, it's obviously a pay. This one is called Vermilion. And I'm just going to put a little bit out. And then I think I'm going to have to smoosh it around a little bit with a palette knife. Now this one's going to be a little bit more orangey than the other one, but that's okay. A little bit of seam bending. Soak it up. And squinch. And dry. Okay, so that looks cool too. I like it. So that one was using the watercolor in a tube, and I'm su I'm assuming you could use the watercolor palette, like the, the cakes too. I mean, why not, right? I mean, everything else is working. My whole point of showing you all these different things is to show you that whatever you have, you can use to color seam binding. So um, all you gotta do is get you some seam binding. Okay, since I'm into the artist media right now, let's do, um, Let's do gelatos. Now, I have to confess, I've not really used gelatos much at all. I have some, but I just haven't really used them. I don't know why. Um, I need to play, I see, I need to play with my supplies. So, um, I'm gonna show you two different ways to use a gelato on seam binding. Obviously, the first one, you put it on your palette there, add some water on your palette, on your mat. Add some water to it. And then your seam binding. And then soak it up. And this one is gonna be lighter because the other way you can do it is you can go direct to your seam binding. And then this one's going to be darker. So you just want to, just like you did with the ink pad, you just want to run it exact, right over top of your seam binding. You do use a little bit more gelato when you do it that way. And then you just want to spray it. And then get all that picked up. Let me wipe this up. I know, I hope you all aren't cringing too much every time I do that. Being a little wasteful, but I've got so many products to get through here. Alright, so I'm going to dry both of these up. There's the Direct 2, and then there's the... Oh look, I got some of the Direct 2 ink on there. Okay, so now we've got the Direct 2, which is obviously darker and then here was the one where we put it on the mat and then picked it up but you see the darker spots that's where I touched it after I did the after I did that one so that's the same color so you can get and if you, you probably if you didn't put as much on there like I did it probably wouldn't be as intense so that's a gelato it's fun I mean I know you guys have some of the stuff I know you do uh, my camera just shut off again so I'm using Neo color too water soluble wax pastels um, I love these things so I just picked out one and first I'm going to start by just coloring onto my mat and then adding some water and then 
using a palette knife to kind of mix it together. And then adding a seam bending. Just like that. You know, I don't think I've tried this one um, going straight to the seam binding. Let's see what that looks like. I'm sure it works just like the um, um, gelato did. Okay. Add some water. And squinch it up. And then I'm going to give them a... So I'm having a heck of a time with my battery today, again. My camera keeps shutting off, and you know what I think it is? I think I just need to buy new batteries. Um, you know, you can wear them out. I have two, and I interchange them. I, you know, charge them, interchange them, whatever. But I think I need to buy a new one, because I think that's what's going on. Um, I don't know where I left off, but these two are from the uh, Water Soluble Wax Pastel Caran uh, Neo Color 2s. Um, this one was directly to the seam binding, and then this one was putting the color pigment on the mat. Well, these aren't even completely dry all the way. But you can see, you can see the difference in color. This one, this one's obviously more accurate to the color you want. So there's that. And then, it's my crayon, runaway crayon. And then we have ink tents, um, pencils and blocks, and I'm gonna show you, even with the block, you know, you can't exactly scribble onto your mat and it works. You have to take something like a craft knife and just kind of scrape the color off, which reminds me, I haven't tried those color burst powders thingies yet, but they would work too. They would work just as well. And then you just make yourself a little pile there Whoops. Trying to keep it away from the water. And then get it wet. Make sure you mix it up a little bit. And then add your seam binding. Just as simple as that. So then you want to crinkle that up and give it a dry. Okay, so now we are, there. that one's all dry and that was the green right there. That looks pretty cool. So that is the blocks and then, believe it or not, the pencils work too. Let me use the same color. Let's just see if it looks the same. So with the, pen, or with the pencils, you have to go directly to the ribbon or the seam binding and hold the pencil on its side there and just run it across like that and then add water and squinch it up alright so there's using the ink tense pencil and then there's using the ink tense blocks ink so pencil, block, whoa, they look about the same, don't they? I think it looks pretty cool. I'm pretty excited. I was pretty excited about that one. I mean, it's kind of like one of those things where it's just like, oh, duh. I should have known that. I should have known that was going to work. <laughs> um, okay, so we know that the blocks and the pencils work for the ink tints, and so does the graphitant. Um, Derwent pencils because they are water soluble and so does the uh, Derwent watercolor, but they all work the same. I mean if the ink tint pencils will work so will any water soluble um, media All right, let me set this aside I'm still not done yet. Can you believe that? This is like a never-ending Oh, I might be close to being done. I think I got one more way markers these are the Faber-Castell and I'm going to use one of these um, 
pit pen, the big artist, uh, big brush pit pen. And this one is light cobalt turquoise. So all I'm going to do is literally cut my seam binding and then just marker on top of it. Whoa. And then add some water to it. And then just crinkle it up. We're going to have to try another marker too. Because I think this is pretty cool. So if you're making cards and stuff and you're using your, you're coloring some images with your markers and you want to add some seam binding, um, it's obviously, it obviously can be done. All right, crinkle it up. Whoa. And then I'm going to dry it up. All right, so here it is dry. And that is using the, the Faber-Castell artist pit pens, big brush. Yeah, I guess it doesn't have to be a big brush, just whatever you have. So that looks pretty cool. And then let me grab some other markers because I'm just curious to see if it'll work. Obviously the distress markers will work because, you know, they are water soluble. Let's try a pro marker. I just haven't, I don't have a clue. I haven't checked this one out yet. Um, let me pick a cut. Let me pick a bright color. Well, that's not very bright. Not that one. That one is. Oh, amethyst. It's an amethyst pro marker, and this has got two ends. So I'm going to use the end that's a chisel. Let me get some seam binding first. Let's just mark on there and see what happens. I think if you work pretty quick with any marker, I think it'll work. I think it'll work with anything. We'll see. All right, I'm going to dry it up and see what we got. Okay. Wow, that, turned, that didn't turn out too bad at all. You can't really see the marks, and it looks pretty cool. Yep. So that one's a pro marker. Alrighty, let's try these Spectrum War markers. Maybe not quite such a vivid color. Let's try, let's do an orange. That's different. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna get me a piece of seam binding, and I'm gonna use the chisel end. This is Spectrum War. Whoa, that's bright. And then I'm gonna get it wet. It's a pretty bright color. Wipe that up. And then I'm gonna squish it. Let me get it. Let me get a clean paper towel. Good grief. I keep, I think I'm mixing my colors. All right, I'm gonna dry that. Whoa, Evelyn. All right, so this one turned out pretty cool too. Look how bright that is. And that one's using the Spectrum Noir, um, I guess that's all they're called, markers. This was OR1. Um, so yeah, so there's three different markers. I think they worked out pretty cool. I think it looked pretty good. All right, so I think that's all. I'm sure there's more. I'm sure there's many, many more media that you can use. So just think about it that way. Anything that you have in your stash and you want to color some seam binding, grab it and give it a try because you don't know unless you try, right? Um, I'm going to see. I'm going to see if I can clean my, my heat gun off here. Look how bad that looks. Let me grab a couple things and unplug it and be right back. Okay, so I've got my heat gun unplugged. Just want to show you that it's unplugged. First thing I'm going to try is just a straight up baby wipe and see if I can get all that color off of there. It doesn't look like it's doing very good. I mean, it's getting a little bit, but not near as much as I'd like for it to. All right, the second thing I'm going to try is alcohol. I'm going to put some alcohol that you get at the store. Oh, my battery again. Jeez. 
Don't do it while it's plugged in though, okay? And don't plug it in until it's thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly dried. But it's picking up most of that gunk and yuck. Just from all the different um, media that I'm using. Even stuff that's um, meant to be permanent is coming off of here. I like it. Well, that just made me happy. Happy girl. Okay, so there you have it. There's all this pretty seam binding. We used all kinds of different media. Um, and mo all of this right here was done with just white hug snug seam binding. I get it at uh, Ribbons by Zipper Stop on Etsy. I will put that link below. Um, you get a whole bunch for $10. You get, what, 100 yards for $10. So if you can only get one or two, get white because you can make all these colors with whatever you have at home. Um, and then don't forget, you can, if you get the color, you can crinkle that up too. Um, what else? I think that's all I got. If you have any questions for me, don't hesitate to ask me. Leave me a comment um, below and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And if, you got, if you've tried any other medium um, or media that you want to use, that you've used with your seam binding, let me know. Um, if you have a different way to do your seam binding, let me know. Um, and I guess that's all I got for you right now. And I will see you next time. Bye.